Access Class Analysis by Araceli Arias and Matias Lazagabas. The purpose of this video is to report the results of our teaching performance in our lesson in the Access program. The video is structured in three parts. First, we will analyze the parts of our lesson by contrasting some aspects of our plan with the actual events that happened in the classroom making emphasis on the strengths and weaknesses of it based on the contents covered in this course. Then, we will give an account of how we would solve the issues we encountered during our lesson. Finally, we will reflect on how this experience has helped us define ourselves as teachers of English and has provided us with a better understanding of the teachers' and students' roles in the classroom. The first thing we did to begin our class was to call the road to know who was present in the classroom because, at least at the beginning of the lesson, we didn't expect students to participate voluntarily. Then we introduced ourselves and presented the class objectives in simple language so the students would know what was expected of them. The class objectives were written on the whiteboard in order to help them focus on accomplishing them. Next, we presented our students the first activity, choosing the correct sentence. Although not fluently, the activity worked fairly well. Overall, students participated after being asked by the teachers and proved to have a certain level of mastery over the basic concepts behind the difference between both tenses. The following activity, named Find the Mistake, was far more troublesome. To begin with, the instructions we had planned weren't clear or simple enough, which violates the classroom management for activities principle presented in Chapter 5, Scrivener, 2005. In addition, we forgot to model our activity for our students, which made it even more difficult to understand what they had to do. As stated by Sachs and Ho, by watching and listening to the teacher, the students gained some insights into how he or she could do a similar task or strategy. Both of these problems were important weaknesses of our, of our teaching performance. However, this opened up an opportunity for helping students build up confidence by providing permanent monitoring of their work, which reflected our interest towards their understanding of the activity. In the end, our monitoring happened to be one of our greatest strengths. We believe that being a new teacher is in itself a challenge because the learning environment the students are used to is tragic, causing them to have a higher effective filter as well as lower confidence and take fewer risks. Due to this, one of the greatest strengths of our class was the permanent monitoring, which showed the students how interested we were in their learning outcomes, building up some confidence that later on would lead to them letting us know whether they were not following or needed further explanations. Near the ending of the Find the Mistake activity, we experienced a situation that made it impossible for us to continue with the activities as we had planned them. There was a student who told us that they were not really following the class because the previous contents weren't clear, which is supported by Krashen's natural order hypothesis, posited in 1982. Although we had included some backup activities in our lesson plan, in case we were running long or short in time, or if the overhead projector didn't work, we hadn't really thought about everything that could happen in the classroom. 
so we didn't have anything in our repertoire that could have helped us solve that issue. Fortunately, we had discussed outside class what could be done if we were to encounter such a problem. We believe that the best way in which we could improve this aspect would be not taking for granted that the students already know the previous content, especially for meeting a group of students for the first time. Also, it would be very useful to begin the class with an activity through which we could determine whether the students are prepared to move on or need to reinforce some contents. Due to the proficiency of the students and the complexity of the contents, some doubts appear during the explanation of the most challenging concepts. For instance, when we were explaining the difference between last year and in the last year, one of the students inquired using the L1 whether he had properly understood. In order to provide him with a suitable answer and avoid causing more confusion, we also used the L1, and we are quite convinced that this did not cause any harm in the learning process. On the contrary, using Spanish helped us to be more precise in what we meant. Precision of meaning is important, and rough comprehension is simply not good enough. By reflecting on our lesson, we learned about both the roles of participants of the lesson, as well as how this experience has helped us reach a deeper understanding of what being a teacher means. Regarding roles in the classroom, we noticed that teachers do not have a static one. Instead, it shifts according to the students' needs as well as the part of the class. Just to mention a couple, teachers can act as motivators, facilitators of interaction, researchers, and also learners. On the other hand, we learned about a student's role, which we had never thought of. They must be providers of feedback by reflecting about their relation between the lesson and their personal learning processes. This feedback can be both general or specific. The former is when it is about the overall construction of the class or the approach taken by the teacher. The latter, when there is some content or activity in specific that they find hard to understand and should be given to the teacher as soon as possible. This experience helped us to make our ideas about teaching more realistic. We learned that even though planning a class is important, as teachers we cannot suppose that everything will go as expected. We realized that the time might be too short, that the objectives might not be congruent with the students' current knowledge, or that some activities could simply not be appropriate for a group of students. In that sense, we think that a teacher must foresee the inconveniences that he or she could encounter with the class in order to have a backup activity that is suitable not for a group of students in his or her imagination, but for the real students that he or she is going to teach. <laughs>